Good morning, everyone. I'd like to invite um, Kimberly to the front as we begin with a word of prayer. Shall we all stand please? Continue to be with us and have your way this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Honorable Emma Hippolyte, Minister in the Ministry of Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives, and Consumer Affairs. Mr. Xavier de Moussac the Chief Executive Officer of Caribbean Grains, Mortimer de Moussac, Director of Soridin, mm, great, <laughs> Mr. Osman Davy, the Manager of Caribbean Grains Limited, Dr. Stephen King, representing Rice St. Lucia, Honorable Priest Kailash Leos, representing Ubuntu Movement, we have our Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Commerce, Mrs. Charmaine Louis-Justin, Director of Consumer Affairs, Mrs. Wendy Frederick, other members of staff from the Ministry of Commerce. We have management and staff from, the, from Caribbean Greens Limited. Venus, thank you, our videographer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. good morning. It is really a pleasure to be here in the South today and to have this brief check hand over ceremony. Every now has a beginning. And how did it begin? Caribbean Grains submitted an application to participate in the 16th annual St. Lucia Taiwan Partnership Trade Show. And since the company is not small, it's not micro or medium, um, it was a challenge. But like we have done in the past, we made exceptions um, for certain entities or companies to participate. And um, we allowed Caribbean Grains participation because we believe that um, it was an opportunity for the company to create some brand awareness. Because quite a few persons in St. Lucia they are not aware that there is a flour mill located in St. Lucia, right here in Viewfort, where flour is actually produced here. And um, we felt it important that our people, um, we, they were, they, for them to be aware of that fact, and they could buy local. Because as part of our Love St. Lucia campaign, we, at the Ministry of Commerce, we assist businesses to present their products so persons can know that these products are made right here. So it was a great opportunity for Caribbean Greens to participate in the St. Lucia Taiwan Partnership Trade Show. And stemming out of that participation, Caribbean Greens pledged that all of the proceeds from the sale of its um, croissant and other similar products would have been donated for charitable cause or purpose. However, the company then changed, and many of our um, participants, many persons who visited the trade show, you know, were treated with free croissant during the trade show, so we're very grateful for that. And Caribbean Greens decided that every package of flour sold, the money would be donated. So the, coming out of um, 
the company's participation it was very beneficial for us and so we're very happy and um, the company agreed to make that donation to the Ubuntu movement and that movement um, Ubuntu that's the movement that manages the seed resource center in Viewfort. And that resource center was recently established and has a very important purpose. And that is to develop our young people in Viewfort. Because you are all aware of the level of crime. And we believe that one of the crime fighting measures is to engage our youth, ensure that they are engaged in productive activities so that they can make a positive difference. And we are very happy to be here today. Caribbean Greens has kept its promise and will be handing over that check to the Ubuntu Movement representative in a while. That's Honorable um, Priest Kailash Leos will be receiving that check on behalf of the young people and the resource center, the Seeds Resource Center in Viewfort. Um, at this moment, I want to also apologize on behalf of Honorable Dr. Kenny Anthony, who is the parliamentary representative for Viewfort South. Regrettably, Dr. Anthony is unable to join us today because he's currently out of state. So I'd like to express his apologies for not being part of this um, very important ceremony this morning. At this time, I would like to invite Mr. Eddie Antoine from Caribbean Greens to deliver some brief remarks. Well, who and what is Caribbean Greens? Caribbean Greens, we are the manufacturer of animal feed and flour. Um, why are we here today? Caribbean Greens, we operate in Viewfort, so we manufacture in Viewfort and we operate, but we also supply the entire island. Um, what we, we look at when you, the reason we are donating towards this, this project is that how we look at it is crime is like, for example, a bottle of Gramazone and you pour it down in a river. Where you pour that bottle of Gramazone is going to affect that particular area. However, it's going to be diluted in that water and it's going to go down to the river. You will not see it, but it's affecting many other areas. So, yes, the crime is in Viewfort, the crime is heavy in Viewfort, but it's going to affect the entire island. It's going to affect the entire economy of the island. We operate on the island, we operate within the economy, and how we see it is that we want to give back to help out the economy and help out. So how do we do it? We help those movements that are going to target those people that are, um, I would say, Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite um, Honorable Priest Kailash Leos um, from the Ubuntu Movement to deliver some brief remarks. And after Honorable Priest Kailash, I'd like to invite Dr. Stephen King, who will speak on behalf of Rice St. Lucia. Blessed love. Give thanks for life. As I'm the protocol has been established, I would still like to acknowledge our honorable minister, looking elegant as usual. <laughs> uh, give thanks to the CEO, Mr. Dimusak, and your, your party and all other officials, the permanent secretary, honorable. Um, Viewfort is, I'm from Library, you know, so Viewfort basically was the place I used to, your sister, you know, was in customs. When I just left school and she was in the, in the, in the free zone when I was 19, you know, so Viewfort was the place that I knew as my city. So when we heard what was happening in Viewfort after it came to the point whereby you had babies actually passing, being murdered, you know, um, 
it touched my wife sincerely to the point that you know, we had to actually see what we could do to help to alleviate the situation. So that is how myself and Rice, Dr. King, you know, and also Mr. Dan Paul and all, and Betty Jean, we came together. And from the inception of coming into Viewfort, our first step was just speaking with the women, the women from Bruceville, the women from um, West Hall, the women from Martin Luther King Street. And everyone just wanted peace. Everyone wanted to, to, to live peacefully. And from that, you know, they actually urged the men and them, so the men and them asked that they actually come together and have what we refer to as a, a, a ceasefire with understanding. So from March 2023, after six months, you know, we were blessed to actually see some statistics from the, the Prime Minister's office that showed that there was a sharp decrease in violence in violence, in view for and criminal activity. So not just only murders. For six months, there was nobody actually getting shot. In a space whereby you had people dying one, two, every single day. So what we realized is that just by being able to come into a, 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 a space whereby you could show a level of empathy, understanding to the plight of other people, and go into the space and help to empower them. The Seeds Resource Center came out of conversation with Dr. King, because he says, well, but Chris, when we've been going everywhere, we go and we try to solve the crime and it cannot solve and things, so we really want to do something different in Viewford and let Viewford be that particular space. So I wrote to the Prime Minister, he actually brought us in, uh, Mr. Ernest Hiller, the Commissioner of Police, and the Prime Minister's office has been very supportive from, from the inception, he said, Chris, you know, go in, whatever little we could do to support, we are going to help to support, we are going to support it. We met the business, the, the business community and found out that only 5% of the staff of any of, of the major business establishments are employees coming out of U4. So Coconut Bay with 500 staff, only 25 of them or so are from U4. So the Seeds Resource Center then embarked upon a, a training program every other Wednesday whereby we employ the human resource manager of KFC, of, um, also of um, Marcy, we employ them of um, other, other, other what we call capacity building groups to come into the resource center, even um, simple CPR, right? Just emergency, how to re um, um, help someone who is in a difficult situation. And to see the participants, people who were upset, angry, um, demonstrating their certificates proudly, you know, on their status instead of um, a moment later and death and violence, right, is something that fuel us to actually want to continue and have a space whereby the people could actually come and get empowered. Not that we want Caribbean green just to give people more jobs. We want the people within the area to build up the capacity whereby they could contribute better to whatever Caribbean greens are doing and the other companies. So I give thanks for that opportunity, you know, and I pray that, as you said, the relationship it grows because one of the things that's happening right there in Bruceville is um, pig farming. You know, and we, one of the projects that we are embarking on is a biogas system because most of the feces that comes from the pig farm it goes right back into the water supply. So we say, why don't we take the same waste, put it into a, 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 a chamber and then produce gas that could be actually passed up on to the people that are less fortunate. So seeds is not just only about education, it's also about economic empowerment. Because if you could tell a young man how long it takes a pig to get mature from, from birth to, to slaughter, about six months. So the, in the initial step, when we were speaking to the young men, they never wanted to live. They preach, but what do you say, man, anything, anything. But when a man gets a pig today, and he has to raise it for six months, at least he wants to see that six months period. And if he gets another 50, he wants to see that other six months period. So these people who did not want to live now wants to live, right? Because they're taking care of their pigs. So definitely I give thanks again and I can see where that partnership would actually grow. And give thanks Honorable Minister you know, for having us and give thanks for welcoming us into your space. And we pray that you know, whatever that we are doing, we could partner because seeds represent that partnership, that space. You know, whereby people could come together and help to uplift whatever we are doing down in the South. Give thanks. Good morning. Um, yes, protocol being established. Minister Hippolyte, great to see you. Moussa Dumusak, thank you. 
um, staff of Caribbean Green, staff of the ministry, and of course, my partner and brethren, Honorable Priest Kailash. It's good to be here this morning. And to take off from where Priest Kailash left off, this would be the third time that Rice St. Lucia would be involved in interventions to reduce violence in Viewfort. When, when what transpired in Viewfort, um, which was shocking to so many people, and I got called by some of my mobilizers on the ground to intervene, and I was told that um, Priest Kailash is on as well. I, he's absolutely right. I said, if we're going to do something, let's do something sustainable. Going and talking to people to have a ceasefire and not offering a change of environment for them is really just a temporary solution and not the answer. The Seeds Foundation was therefore born. It is the, to me, it is the first real intervention like that. Our human resource development centers were built to do that as well, but never truly did, Madam Minister. But the Seeds Resource Center is doing that. And it is a, when we spoke, when we mobilized the various communities that were being tragically hurt by the violence, and Chris Kilash, you'll remember at, at the South Louis Community College conference room, telling them that the future of this country shall rise out of Viewfort. And I don't say that lightly. Viewfort has all that is required to set a new way, a new trajectory. Viewfort has some assets of which Caribbean Grains is one. We have a business forum, and I'm so pleased to bring Caribbean grains into that, that fold to create a new environment, an all-inclusive environment that understands that our youth get involved in violence because they themselves are victims of a system. A system that traumatizes, has traumatized our youth from generations and continues to traumatize them in a psychological way such that they, they have a, almost a don't care, a pamele attitude to life, to their life and to other lives. And that is born of significant trauma. How do you address that? Creating that positive environment, creating that trauma sensitive environment, understanding these youth, how they think and what needs to happen. And that is what we can do in Viewfort with your help. And that's what we've started doing. But that is not an easy road. It is a continuous process because you cannot just say that and walk away. You have to be there with them the whole way. And we are doing that. We are going to do that. And you will see Viewfort rise. You will see Viewfort be a model. That is my vision and that is my hope. I want to thank the Honorable Dr. Kenny Anthony because he called me um, after you spoke to him, P.S., about um, this particular initiative. And he said, look, bring Caribbean grains on. This is the beginning of something. And I see so much opportunity creating new flowers. We're talking about cassava flowers, growing cassava, creating new animal feeds, creating new businesses, creating new opportunities. We can do great things, Mr. Dumasa, great things. It's all in our mindset. And everything is in our creativity and our innovation. And that's what I see here this morning. Thank you ever so much. Honorable Priest Kailash Leos and Dr. Stephen King. I sat there and wow, I guess I'm, this, I'm just overwhelmed now with hope. And you are very busy and you could just take some time and think less of yourself and making more money and profits. And to do this for the young people, it is really commendable. And I really want to appeal to other persons because crime is our business. It impacts us all. It, we cannot just go to our home and turn on our alarm system and close our door and think that, you know, we have created that wall because we don't live only in one space. So crime is our business and we must come together. The business community, civil society, everyone must come together to fight crime. So thank you very much and continue the excellent work that you have commenced. At this time I'd like to invite Mr. Osman Davy to deliver some brief remarks on behalf of 
Oh, um, that was done by Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my apologies, Mr. Davy. Yeah, I know why I have you. My apologies. The man of the hour. Yes. So it will be our pleasure, um, Mr. Xavier de Moussa, the CEO of Caribbean Greens, will deliver some brief remarks. Welcome. Well, thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much, Noble Minister. I'm very bad at speech. <laughs> um, I'm very happy that you're all here. I'm very happy that we can move forward in helping uh, the View 4 community. Um, we have what we do here, as we mentioned, we have a school for bakeries. I mean, View 4 people, but also all the islands. As you might know also, we have the CQML, which is the, the processing plan on which we are potential, huge potential to grow uh, uh, new job and new activities. I think we have a deal with the, with the jail, taking people from the jail, taking them out and you know, bringing them out of, of where they are and learning them new business so that they don't have to go back into the crime, basically. Um, and I would say going a little bit more forward, uh, I'm, I'm very much, I don't know you say in English, but in, in, in favor of looking at the CARICOM and mainly the OECS in a different way with the French West Indies. I always say that I'm a bit of a, like uh, you know the old records where it's, it's always saying the same thing. Uh, the French West Indies are wealthy. They they have issue with the la with their land because there's uh, some poison in the land and then the uh, manpower is too expensive to 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 do the yam uh, production. And we import in Martinique and Guadeloupe between three and four thousand tons of yam every year. And guess from where it comes from not from the OECS, from Nicaragua. And you guys here, you put a stone in the land. I mean, I'm not speaking of Antigua, but St. Lucia or St. Vincent or Dominica, you put a stone in, in, the, in, your, in your earth and, and, and the tree grows. So this type of things is a must to develop because the, 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 the French West Indies are more or less on board with the OECS and you guys can, can grow that here. We, we need to get some more. It's, it's not, we're not in agriculture, so it's difficult for us to do it. But that's a discussion we had with our farmers, well, our broiler farmer, because they have a lot of manure, so they could grow that. But a lot of people could do it. You know, 3,000 tons of yam, it's, it's a lot of yam to be produced every, every, every month. And it's a lot of job that can be given. And it is not, it does not need, I mean, it needs to be at the proper price, but it, it is not doesn't need to be subsidized like the banana was subsidized like it is. This is something that, and when you speak of Martinique and Guadeloupe, I can tell you Barbados is so dry that they need it also, and St. Martin and St. Bart and all the, the Antigua and all the other islands. So once we can grow something here, and we are sitting on a market of 1.5 million people when you take the OECS, Barbados and the French West Indies. So it's quite a decent market on which we can grow things where you guys are stronger and then Martinique Guadeloupe is maybe stronger and things like this. So it's, it's really a must that we look into that and, and that would help for sure. You know, your, your young guys that don't know what, where to go or what to do except doing foolish things. So, you know, our idea here is obviously to develop this the flour meat, develop the feed meal, develop the, 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 the broiler and the pork. After that, we're going to get into the pork uh, to, to promote the, pro, the, the pork. We need obviously help of the government to protect the local production uh, because that, that is especially on, on the chicken and everything, we really need some help. We know that we have enemies who are the people importing finished products, but you know, you, you cannot have a country with only trading. Uh, how are you going to, uh, the, the people who have a supermarket, how are they going to have buyers if nobody has, a, has an income? So, so you re we really need to push the agriculture forward because that, that is a, a main, uh, one of the main um, way to create a job and obviously also the bakery. Because <laughs> we need to develop, as I was explaining to Minister, is that uh, in Martinique and Guadeloupe when we arrived, uh, there was hardly any shops. Uh, so it was all, all the bakeries were in the garage or things like this. We have brought them, this, this is over 10, 15 years, but we have brought them to a totally different way. So they have shops and instead of only selling bread, which is profitable, but it's, it's not as profitable as doing a little, uh, you know, uh, 
selling you know sandwiches or, 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 or pizza or things like this and people love it because instead of going to Kentucky Fried Chicken you have a very nice food that can be made locally by local people and it makes the bakers you know make more money and it gives ideas to other people to develop this type, kind of business so th there's a lot of potential to grow for St. Lucia in, in, and we're very very happy to, to bring and help everybody into this uh, challenge sorry I hope I was not too long <laughs> Mr. De Moussac, and I'm really happy you're here today. Uh, so when you see the line item in the budget which says donation or contribution going forward to uh, the Ubuntu movement for the Seeds Resource Center, you will appreciate the value of every dollar in that budget. At this time, I'd like to invite our Honorable Minister, Minister Emma Hickelit, <coughs> and the Minister is responsible for Commerce manufacturing, business development, cooperatives and consumer affairs. We invite you, Min Honorable Minister, to deliver some brief remarks. Good morning all. Morning. Again, I want to take this moment to welcome Mr. Dimusa here with us. As a CEO, I think it is extremely important um, that the Lord has brought you here for this very important ceremony. Um, I want to recognize Honorable Prish Kailash I want to recognize Dr. King, um, Mr. Davy, Mr. Atwan, and the other senior members of the Caribbean Greens, as well as our PS of Ministry of Commerce, DPS Ministry of Commerce. We have our HR Commerce. Um, we have Wendy and the others from Consumer Affairs. Uh, so, and the senior staff of the ministry, our press. Um, person who is here with us. Um, good morning, all. And as I stand here, I believe I need I can bring you greetings from the, our honourable prime minister, from the cabinet of ministers, and especially from the two parliamentary reps representing Beaufort, and that is Dr. Kennedy Anthony and the honourable Musa Moses Musa Jabatis, um, especially for the what has actually brought us here. I know if our various conversation with Dr. Anthony, I know that the issue impacting report touches at the core. Um, you speak with him and you can see that he really wants a transformation. He has served the people of Beaufort for approximately 25 years or so, five terms, and he really wants us to move from where we are now, especially as it impacts families and our young persons. So I know you really would have liked to be here today at this ceremony. Um, as well for Minister Shabatis, because the two con constituencies are connected. Um, and we are here and we've heard all the conversation. As the Minister for Commerce, I'm extremely pleased to be here because what I'm seeing is what we've been asking. is a partnership between private sector, civil society, and government. And today I want to take a moment to, to thank in a big way the Honorable Prish Kailash from the Hutu Movement and Dr. King from Rice and Lucia. I want to thank you for the work that you have done in the past and you continue to do in terms of transforming the lives of our young people. And you said it better than I when I listened to you and said that it's the environment where they came from has shaped them. And I remembered some almost uh, 50 years ago. So I don't want to say about my age, but I can <laughs> <laughs> But some 50 years ago, um, I could remember being in Sufre and looking at the environment and I had my sister at the time was a teacher and she used to come home and discuss the challenges in the school and I just look at the children from Barron's Drive in particular at the time and Palmis area and I knew that somehow if we did not do something then they would be angry with persons in the different parts of the Supra constituency. 
And we formed at that time what we call the Concerned Citizen Group. And we provided school scholarships to the children. We had counseling. We supported them in terms of, I think at that time, we started what we call the school feeding program in St. Lucia, almost 50 years ago. We put our own resources in, and we started feeding those kids. And, and I'm saying so just to tell you that as individuals and as civil society, we need to look around us to the things that are not working well, and then to ask the Lord to guide us in terms of how we how he uses us to transform our, uh, our community. What is happening in Viewfort cannot be changed only by the government. Civil society, and now I am pleased that private sector in terms of Caribbean Green has joined hands to examine the landscape and determine how best to change the, the, what we are doing, what is happening there. So I want to say thank you on behalf of the government, on behalf of all of St. Lucia, and I want to tell you that as, as a Minister in Indian Commerce, as well as a, a member of the Cabinet, that we'll do all in our power to support it. This year, 2023, has been a year where commerce has received quite a bit of attention by this government. And you, when you looked at we, within the Ministry of Commerce, we've launched our MSME program. And that again is to assist small businesses that were impacted by COVID, to give them an assistance so that they can come up. Assist young persons to start their own businesses, persons to start their own businesses. Um, within the Prime Minister's um, ministry, we had the youth economy. For the youth economy, um, quite a few young persons, I think it's over 100, almost 200 young persons have received a $5,000 grant to assist them to start a new business. Within our MSME, we have up to $25,000, 70% grant, 30% loan. All this is showing us, and other things that are happening, is a government that is focused on putting the people of St. Lucia first. It is a new direction in terms of governance, but it is a direction that we believe is needed for St. Lucia at this time. It is what is needed for St. Lucia at this time. I want to take this moment as well to thank the other partners because without the Taiwan trade show, then Caribbean Greens would not have had an opportunity to, to um, participate in that exhibition and then come up with this initiative to support um, the young people of Viewfort. So I believe that it is together, together, all of us, doing what we can, where we are. Civil servants, because we have a few here today, doing what we have to do efficiently. That is critical for us, because if the civil service do not perform efficiently, then you have an ineffective government. So I want not only the Ministry of Commerce to understand that the staff at the Ministry of Commerce, but every civil servant listening. That it is when you do your work well, whether it is at the ports, whether it is at customs, whether it is at infrastructure, when you do your work well, you'll be serving the people of St. Lucia and you'll be serving the government of St. Lucia. Each of us, parents, in terms of what you do at home, in terms of the guidance to your kids, and the church, how you present yourself, the role in the community, all of us coming together in partnership to making the lives of each of us better. That's what it is. Each of us, we are called, each one of us there was placed in this planet for a purpose. We need to know what it is and we need to be the hands and feet of the Lord. That's what it is. And I can tell you that this is because it's from that concept that last month, uh, November was Creole Month. October was Creole Month. And within Creole Month in Sufre, we said we wanted to have a legacy program. And then we came up with Kudme Sufre. And for the entire month from November up into the December, Sufre is still in Kudme mode. And that's what it is. Kudme is one helping each other. As a country, if we do not do that, if we do not support the manufacturing sector, and you said it correctly, 
we need to be able to use the resources that we have and we need to be able to be creative about it and we need to be able to take it we need to be able to utilize it we need to be able to be proud of what we have and we need to be able to move together as one nation so i want to take this moment to thank all parties for what we are doing here today and i believe if we are doing it right the lord will guide us i thank you we do appreciate your unwavering support at this time this is the moment when the check will be handed over <laughs> uh, i would like to invite uh, mr osman davy the manager of caribbean grains to present the check to honorable chris kailash leos who will receive it on behalf of the ubuntu movement and dr stephen king it's a partnership dr king <laughs> Yes. Um, from Caribbean Greens, Tama, who will um, do the vote of thanks. Protocol established. Good morning, everyone. It has been such an honor to have you here as part of this wonderful ceremony. On behalf of Caribbean Greens Limited Management and staff, I would like to extend heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed guest, Honorable Minister Emma Hippolyte, um, the Permanent Secretary, Representative for the Ubuntu Movement, <laughs> Honorable Prince Kailash, and Rising Lucia, Dr. King. Special thanks to the staff of Ministry of Commerce and Consumer Affairs and staff of Caribbean Greens Limited for attending. As we are proud to be part of such a great movement, we wish that the, we wish the very best happens for the Ubuntu movement and they prosper in their mission for, for the youth and young adults at risk in Viewfort. Sincere thanks to our heads of the various departments who handled the planning throughout. Finally, I'd like to say thank you to one and all for being present here with us today. Once more, thank you. Thank you very much, Tama. Well, at this time, the flower has been put into good use. <laughs> we have some delicious um, treats awaiting us, so I invite you of course, to um, taste and see what the flower can do. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs>